Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, and I know that you'll receive a blessing by being here. I, I just want to tell you, I, I, I tell you all every week, you need to study your Sunday school lesson. And this week it was, we all need each other. Yeah. And one of the illustrations in there I thought was just, well, a couple of them were really good. One of them in particular said that when God saved us, he didn't save us to make us better. He saved us to make us new. He didn't want any of that old person left in there. He wanted us to be new, that we would go out into the world and be lights for him. And another illustration in there this morning said that when a general goes into battle, he doesn't send an individual to fight. The whole army goes together. And that we're stronger when we stand together, and that's what we ought to be doing. So I just want to thank you for being here this morning. Uh, but I want to encourage you. We aren't having Sunday school. Well, get your book and read it. They're just great lessons. Uh, uh, maybe sometimes we'll be able to have those on a Wednesday night or Sunday morning or whatever it is. But uh, encourage you. And by the way, we're going to get new books today. So if you'll hang around, we'll make sure you get new books sometimes today. Uh, we're going to ask to open our service this morning. If you need a hymnal, uh, hold your hand out the window. The girls will bring you one or something. I uh, ask you to turn to hymn number 174, Breathe on Me. But if you need a hymnal, stick your arm out the window and the girls will bring you a book. said they're just happy to leave it as is so uh, for right now I guess that's what we're going to do but if there is a major conflict if you'll let us know certainly we'll, we'll work with uh, whatever we have to do 
Uh, before we go any further, though, I do want to go to the Lord in prayer. I know each of us have some needs in our heart, uh, some things to be thankful for, some blessings that we've asked for others and for our church, for our pastor search committee, and so many needs that we can think about in our families or in our communities. And, of course, our nation and the pandemic, there's so many things that we could pray for. And so this morning I'm going to lead, but I'm going to ask if you would, where you are, you pray for those needs and uh, desires that you have in your heart. But most of all, pray that as we go out into the world, that others will see Jesus living in and through us. Father, we give you thanks that you've allowed us to assemble in your presence again. And as we're here this morning, we know that there's so many cares and indifference that come into our hearts and lives that sometimes we lose our focus that we're ambassadors for you, living in a world that our light ought to shine out into the darkness. And Father, today we just pray that as we listen to your message, that our hearts would be open and receptive, that we would go out renewed, that we would have a spirit of zeal within us, that we would want to share the good news that Jesus saves. We thank you for each one who is here this morning. We continue to pray for Bethlehem Baptist. We pray for our pastor search committee. We pray for the days ahead. We just ask that you lead us in the direction that you would have us to go. We thank you for Brother Justin, his years of service here, the love that he's brought to this church, his messages that strengthen our hearts and our love for each other. And Father, we just ask that you keep him lifted up also. But we pray for each member of this church, Father, that we would think about we need to be one in the Spirit, a church that's united, a church that will be strong as we pull together, that we would pray, that we would worship, but most of all, that we would seek to do your will. And Father, we pray that as you lead us, that we would pray that the things that we do would bring honor and glory to you. We ask all of this in your holy and precious name. Amen. We're going to ask again if you have a hymn, we'll turn to hymn number 94 at the cross. Hymn number 94. Here.
Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. I just want to encourage you that you are right on time and right where God wants you. And good things are on its way. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew 16. And last week we covered the, the uh, part of this scripture and we shared with that if you know Jesus and that he's your rock, your life shall never be shaken. That you stand on a rock and God holds you up in a powerful way. And I just want to, I pray that you got that word and it's stuck in your heart. And today I just want to go on into the next verses in Matthew 16 verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. There's some boldness saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. This is a major transition in the ministry of Jesus. He was out ministering. But now he has made it clear to his disciples that they are, he is going up to Jerusalem and he will be crucified. And poor old Peter could not take this sin. I want to encourage you that um, transition in your life is a time to be especially prayerful. And like, for instance, the transition of this election, whatever happens, this is a special time to be prayerful. When an airplane is up in the air, to a large extent, it's relatively safe, but its most dangerous time is when it barrels down the runway and starts to lift off the ground. And the other time is when it's coming in, trying to get out of the air down on a solid foundation. Those transition times are the most dangerous. And if, I believe that many of you, in fact, I would not doubt that every one of you, how many know Renee and I are going through a transition? She's going to have to put up with me a whole lot more. <laughs> I will probably won't be as busy out and about. I think she'll find things for me to do. But in your life, when you sense that you're going through a transition, I mean, you know, when everything, you know, people talk about boring. I kind of like boring, everything being <laughs> nice and, you know, and settled and in place. But we constantly go through transitions. It's estimated that 52% of car accidents occur within five miles of a person's home. I think many times you're getting in the car, you're playing with the radio, you're trying to get your mirrors right. Uh, here lately, I, my Lexus has been parked outside. I've had the little Z car in the garage. And so I take off and look out the back mirror and it's all fogged up. 52% of accidents occur within five miles of a person's home. Of course, you're going home and you're thinking, I got to do this and this, and you're not paying attention. I understand in Vietnam that the vast majority of our U.S. soldiers lost their lives in the first couple months and the last months of their tour, once they got settled in. So I want to encourage you that there, you can take from this lesson that you're going to have transitions, and this is a special time to be in prayer. 77% of accidents occur within 15 miles or less of home. So I just want to encourage you during transitions. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go up to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside. That's good. How many know you don't want to get in people's face, do your best to do a Matthews 18 Go to that person individually and talk to them about an issue. Peter did this, but I think he was stepping out of his um, area when he rebuked the Lord and said, Forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen. I want, I'm want praying about this. I want to encourage you that sometimes in history, God has a timetable. And when that timetable comes to, to take place, all your grit and will and ambition and what sometimes sometimes we feel like we come to a point in life that we can control things but when we get closer to the return of jesus christ there are certain things that are prophesied for instance a one world government now i believe we should do everything we can to stand for you know to do have a seek a good government and things but 
if these things start taking place, if you can tune into God, even though all hell breaks loose around us, you can know that this may be God's planning for this situation. And when this happens, you won't find yourself fighting against destiny or find yourself fighting against something that has been prophesied to take place. Like Peter told Jesus in his mind, it would just be unforese unforeseeable that Jesus would suffer at the hands of the religious and political leaders of that day. But how many know that that was destined to happen and your salvation is based upon it as we shall look upon it? Jesus turned to Peter. Matthew 16, verse 23, and said, Get behind me, Satan. I want to let you know, if you discern that someone is speaking over you, I don't think you have to necessarily speak in their face. But the scripture says, Resist the devil, and he will flee. You have authority to say, That is enough of you bringing thoughts and trying to work in my emotions. Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. And this has been especially over the last two weeks challenging to me. For you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. A uh, pastor, Mike Coronan, said Simon stepped into satanic territory when rebuking Jesus for speaking of the cross and attempting to separate him from the cross. It was precisely here where Satan does his most revealing and intentional work, the intent to separate Christ in us from a cross-shaped life. It is only natural for you and I to shun the cross, suffering, reproach. It is only natural for us to, to seek to not have confrontation, to, to not to desire peace at all costs. But as you will see today, there is a time when we need to take up our cross. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. First of all, I want to point out right here, I stand upon the clear logic that I don't care who you are hearing my voice today, if you will, if you desire, if you seek it with all your heart, if you humbly come to God, He will give you full revelation and full comfort of salvation. If anyone wishes to come after me, and one of the things I propose to you today, do you desire to come after Christ? Do you truthfully wish to be God's disciples? Do you genuinely in your heart desire that God would be your Lord and Savior? That's wonderful. But how many know it comes with some stipulations? I think for too long we have taught that if you'll just come to church, maybe even sign a membership card, you, you're fine. You can go and live like you want to. This is not the call. Because when you make a determination in your heart, I will serve the Lord, that is when the true battle, that is when the race begins. That's when you are going to be constantly charged to make that decision over and over again. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, and here's one of the stipulations, he must deny himself. Sin with its middle letter I is a problem. When you look in the mirror, that's the situation that you have to deal with because you are going to have to deny yourself. And I stand here 66 years of age today, and I tell you that is not any easier today than it was as a little baby wanting his diaper changed or wanting to be fed and feeling like that was the primary important thing to take place in the world and nothing else mattered. I want to encourage you. God is calling us, especially at this time, to be prayerful and to be willing, no matter what it costs, to deny ourselves. And the next stipulation is to take up our cross. Now, this could be in many ways, and you may have heard someone um, say, this particular ailment or disease is, a, is my cross to bear. Or maybe a family member 
that that person seems to be to the family a burden to bear. And that truly can apply in many ways. But I want to encourage you, I see this as being the central thought of the gospel, the cross. And I'll share a couple verses about that. We must take up our cross, and the last stipulation is we must follow him. For whoever wishes to save his life, and who does not wish to save their life, this is something you and I must make a decision. And I call you for a commitment today. Lord Jesus, I lay my life down at your feet. Lord Jesus, I determine that I will deny myself. I will take up my cross, no matter what the cost would be, and I will follow you despite what happens to me. Matthew 16, verse 26. And this is something very well... For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And I'm not going to get into that too much today, but maybe even next week we can go to this 26th and 27th verse. Verse 27. And this is, I believe, the next thing that, and we are closer to this. I speak with authority. We are closer to this than we've ever been in history. I believe if you are sensitive to the Spirit, you can hear the rattling of the saber. You can hear the moving in heaven. For the Son of Man, Jesus, is going to come back to this earth. He came as a baby in a manger. But He is coming back as Lord of Lords. He is coming in the glory of His Father with His angels. And He will then repay every man according to his deeds. I'm sorely tempted to keep you here and preach two sermons to you today, but maybe we'll put that over till next week. Let's go back to verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross. In Numbers 21, 9, the children of Israel wonderfully were delivered from 400 years of oppression. Generation after generation, they were oppressed by the Egyptians. God miraculously pulled them out by the hand of Moses. And he brought them into the wilderness. And what we understood could have been a, a couple weeks journey turned into another 40 years where all the adults had to die off. But during that journey, in fact, let me, I would like to read sort of the context of this Numbers 21. After many victories, and Israel vowed to the Lord, Numbers 21, 2, and said, If you will indeed, indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy the cities. And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of that place was called Harma. Verse 4. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea, the children of Israel, during this 40-year journey, and they're to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. And this goes back to a transition. Many times you're going through a period, I think about many of the children not seeing their friends at school and different things, how challenging that must be for families. We become discouraged and the children of Israel became discouraged. Be very careful. Listen. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Be very careful. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our souls loathe this worthless manna, this bread from heaven. They got tired of it. How many know this is so self? This is so us? I hope you see, you realize that many times the conflicts that you face in your family and situations is based because we do not deny ourselves. Verse 6. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. There is a consequence for decisions that we meet. Verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. 
And I believe this is no question in my mind. These serpents are a example of sin, of our selfishness. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away these fiery serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Verse 8 of Numbers 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was if a serpent had bitten anyone. How many know they still had the pain of the bite? If the serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The next time I, you see a, a nurse and they have a pen on, I encourage you to look at their pen. Many times it will be a bronze, a snake on a post. In John chapter 3, you're super familiar with John 3.16. Let's go back to the verse 14. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, this was something that God set in place that Moses put up a standard with a bronze emblem of the snake. And when you or I in this situation were bitten by a snake, they could look at this thing and God supernaturally gave them protection, healing, and I believe comfort as well. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, listen, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Verse 15, that everyone who believes in him, and this is where there's a call for action in your life. When you realize a transition, when you realize that you are caving into a weakness, a sin, what I am convinced that every person God takes them through steps after step after step. He has something in front of you that you have to master. There is something that you face as a challenge, and an attitude, an emotion. It could be a, 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 a vast variety of things that we're facing. Health issues, a uh, situation with finances in some cases, something that weighs heavy upon your heart that you feel the weakness. And you, you felt this weakness so many times and you've gone back to the Lord that you feel just almost like you cannot bear to go to the Lord with it again. I want to encourage you, everyone who believes in Him and goes to Him and to as many as call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe Satan does everything he can. How many of you know there's people in this community that were once very active in church? And you know them personally. You know them. What happened? I want to let you know Satan tricked them. Satan came and he stole and lied to them. And I, today I want to encourage you, there's going to be a continual falling away according to scriptures. There's no way around it. There's going to be some tough times. And here's the scripture, the love of many will grow cold. And I believe every person here can sense that they have gone through a situation, uh, especially if you're driving down 20 during this construction change. In your job, in your own personal relationships at home there's been a time when you, your love got kind of weak and you felt a little angered and you felt a little upset that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life and here's a verse say it with me John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life let me read Matthew 16 24 then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And one of the things I am convinced, well, towards the end here we're going to sing, When I survey the wondrous cross, when you meditate and think on the cross, you take up your cross and you analyze and think about what God has done for you, I believe this is a central point in helping you overcome and be victorious is the cross when you take up that cross when you determine that i will suffer i will not allow selfness sin to rule over me god does something supernaturally romans 8 verse 3 for what the law was powerless to do rules and a 
what's a, a resolution will never get it done. It will never change your life. And I, I think I could speak to several of you. You have determined that I will do this. I will not do that. And how many times have you found yourself fall? I want to let you know I am convinced that this is the solution to deny yourself and to take up your cross. It's simply to get a revelation from God that Jesus hanging on that cross, shedding his innocent blood for you, is your sin and your lack of self-discipline and your not willing, willing to deny yourself. And let me tell you what, this sermon weighs heavy upon me because I want to let you know it's so easy to get sloppy in your devotion to Christ. It's so easy to let sin creep into your life. I believe with all my heart, God is calling me back to a time of being in deep meditation and having a new revelation of taking up my cross and seeing Jesus on that cross and how my attitudes and actions are what caused it to happen. And let me tell you, my friend, if Jesus was put on the cross by our past sins, how many know we break his heart today if we continue in it? I am convinced. For what the law was powerless to do, Romans 8, verse 3, because it was weakened by the flesh. The, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Have you found that? I want to let you know, I, the longer I walk in Christ, the more I feel like I'm almost ashamed to stand up before people and preach. I stand here today, there's only one thing, there's only God's grace that has me here today. And I am hanging by a thread. But I want to let you know, there is a hand that girds us up. And as we talked last week, Thank God there is a rock that you and I can stand upon. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. We will never, I believe, on the other side of eternity, millions and millions of years from now, we'll be sitting beside the crystal sea. Hallelujah. We'll be a man... A, a, Looking over at the pearls, what's the gates of pearls? Hallelujah, the beauty and the music of heaven. And I believe we'll sit back and think, God's mercy is just unbelievable. God's mercy is just, it will be too deep and wide to grasp. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, and so he condemned sin and the flesh. Let me read Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wills, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If you see whatever challenges you have being something associated with the cross, there is power, precious power in the blood. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. I know you've heard this verse, I believe. Listen again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us a ministry and a desire for others to be reconciled. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us this word of reconciliation. Verse 20 of 2 Corinthians 5. Therefore we are ambassadors. I officially appoint every one of you as being an ambassador into this old dark world. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were making his appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. Verse 21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf. These are words, but if you get a revelation of the cross, if Justin will get a new revelation of the cross, I want to let you know that is the way to a higher plane. I believe when, if, if you get a new revelation of the cross and Jesus upon the, the precious, innocent Lamb of God upon the cross, that is the power that stops Satan in his tracks. In fact, you can meditate upon this. Satan cannot cross the blood of Jesus Christ. When you have the precious blood and the understanding of what he has done for us, it empowers you. It allows you to understand the schemes of the devil. 
He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Matthew 16, 24. You've heard this before today. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Anybody who wants to, come after me. You must deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. If you get a vision of the cross and then you realize that you have a weakness and an attitude or an emotion or some situation that you know is not lining up with God, that cross, vision of the cross has the power to come through and give you a will and a motivation to rise above it. And I believe with all my heart, it's simply by the children of Israel seeing that bronze standard and this serpent upon it. I, it. It did something in their hearts that supernaturally God brought healing through it. Let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. Have you ever seen such an entangled mess? This is, you have this word of reconciliation. I, I sense in my heart, you know someone that you can go to and simply give them the message of the cross. Paul says, I preach Jesus and him crucified. If you can somehow present them a message of the cross, it will help them and us to become unentangled. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I think many times we have periods of success, of moral uprightness. We feel like we're invincible. And then we get a little proud. We think it's us. We don't realize it's God's working in us. We have to run this race with endurance. And I call you forth. I don't know where your standard or situation is, but I believe God has us a higher plane, a more effective witness for us. Let us run with endurance the race that is setting before us. And here's the, the clear call to my heart. Fixing, steadfastly looking, fixing our eyes on Jesus, seeing him afresh, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross. He set an example for us. And that example has the power in your life for us to endure. Who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. The girls are going to do the old record cross here in a little while. Despising the shame, and he has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to encourage you. This is a clear solution to every one of our problems, our weakness, our failures. I believe if we will get a clear revelation of the cross, if we will intently, what does it say, fixing our eyes on Jesus, there is a victory for every one of us. And how this world needs to see Christians walking in victory, to see us with a new love in our hearts, with no bitterness or unforgiveness. I just encourage you and I encourage myself, let's draw near to God like never before. We are going to do, uh, when I survey the wondrous cross, I so encourage you, get your hymn books. Wave at these young ladies if you don't have them. Page 99. Look at the words of this. I believe there's a solution there for you. number 99 when I survey the wondrous cross 